just the other side of the Mediterranean. But on the other hand, the Middle East can seem very strange and exotic. Outlandish clothes and customs. Languages that don't seem to have any relation to our own. And even when we do pick up a few words of a Middle Eastern language, we still have trouble with the writing, which looks totally alien to us. Verbally and visually, we're lost. The Middle East is another world, and it doesn't seem to fit into our own historical landscape at all. When we think of the roots of our Western culture and civilization, we may look back to the Middle East of the very earliest times, to ancient Egypt or Babylon or biblical Israel or the first Persian Empire. But we still feel that our main heritage really starts with the Greeks and the Romans. And then we jump forward to the European Renaissance, which eventually leads us to modern times. But where are the Middle Easterners in all this? They don't seem to fit into any of the progression from Greeks to Romans to Renaissance to modern times. And yet, if we look more carefully at this progression, we see that there's something missing. The Roman Empire lasted from about 250 BC to roughly 500 AD. But the Renaissance didn't get going until about 1300 AD. What happened in between? There's an 800 year gap in our history between the fall of Rome and the Renaissance. Did nothing happen during all these centuries? After all, we used to refer to this period as the Dark Ages, and the very word Renaissance means rebirth, which implies that we died when Rome died, and were only born again 800 years later. This idea that the world somehow ground to a halt after the fall of Rome is very deeply ingrained in our minds. And this is the main reason why we have so very little background knowledge of the Middle Easterners, why they're the blind spot in our vision of history. For the irony is that it was precisely during our so-called Dark Ages that the great Islamic civilization of the Middle Easterners reached its peak. In fact, they were the people who bridged the gap in our history, who wrote the missing chapter. If it hadn't been for the Muslims, we might never have had a Renaissance at all. All this began in what we used to regard as one of the most backward regions in the world. The Arabian Peninsula. In the town of Mecca, at the beginning of the seventh century of our era, when an Arab merchant by the name of Muhammad begins to have visions that the archangel Gabriel is asking him to recite the word of God the Arabic word for recitation is Qur'an, or Koran, as we pronounce it in English. And this becomes the holy book of the newly revealed religion of Islam, which will spread throughout the Arabian Peninsula, the Fertile Crescent, Iran, North Africa, and Spain, and even beyond the Middle East into India, and right up to the frontiers of China. This empire was the largest that the world had ever known. In taking over such a vast territory, the Arabs also took over a vast amount of learning and culture.
The early Arab Muslims were themselves very simple Bedouin from the desert. Yet they managed to absorb a great deal of the art and science and philosophy of the ancient world. From the Jews, Greeks, the Romans, the Iranians, the Indians, the Chinese. The great achievement of the Muslims was to synthesize all this and transmute it into a new world culture, the most obvious symbols of which are visual. Islamic architecture, domes and minarets, arches and alcoves, 